video I'm going to show you how to make this really neat um, pico edging which goes around our Ingleborough hot water bottle cover. Um, it is a lovely way to finish a project. It works really well on socks as well actually. Um, what it does is it gives you this double layer so if you look you've got knit side this side and you've got knit side in there as well because actually what's going on is the work is folded down and stitched down inside kind of where you can't see to give this lovely finish so when the hot water bottle is actually sitting in there any glimpse of inside the neck of it just looks beautifully nicely finished doesn't it it's it's um a really pretty edging and it's very easy to do so let me show you Okay, so here's our very cute little um, <laughs> sample hot water bottle. It's, it's very small, um, but all the techniques are there that you need. Um, you, we finished the shaping of the shoulders using the um, decreases. And I've worked a little, a few rounds to give the neck a little bit of height before we finish off with the pico edging. It needs a bit of a block, so it looks a bit um, wobbly down one side, but it's not too bad, is it, before we've given a given it a press. Anyway, we are, um, as you can see, I've put a couple of rows of contrast colour around the top. So on your Ingleborough hot water bottle cover, you, you'll have done the blue all the way up and you'll be back with your turmeric for two rounds. So if you're working your pattern kind of in conjunction with this video, here I am at the round, end of round 90. The technique is, is starting now at the end of round 90. So before we um, can kind of do the folding over to make the pico edge, we're going to do the clever part. And what we're going to do is create a round of eyelets. And it's very easy to create eyelets. We're just going to knit some um, stitches together and put some yarn over. Um, yarn, yarns over, yarn overs? <laughs> yarn overs in. And that will create eyelets. So let me show you how to do that. So to start with, you need to start the round with a yarn over, okay? So normally I would knit so my yarn is nicely out of the way and behind the work. I don't want to do that this time. I want to make sure that when I start to knit, my yarn is in front of the needle so that when I go to knit, I have to take it over the needle. I need it to create that yarn over. Can you see that it has created a yarn over um, if I was to be knitting now, it's got a sort of a yarn over going on there. So to, to make sure that is um, in place, I will make sure that the yarn sits down on the front of my hot water bottle. And we're going to start the round by knitting two together. So just as we did before with the decreases, I'm just putting my needle as if to knit into two stitches there. And I'm going to bring my yarn up and over the needle. So that's created a yarn over and knit two together. So I, I've created, I've, I've decreased the stitches to one, but I've made them up again by doing a yarn over, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. So to create a yarn over going forward, I just need to bring the yarn forward. I don't need to do anything more than that. I don't need to wrap the needle or anything like that. I just need to bring the yarn forward um, put my needle through two stitches to knit two together and round I go. So you can see that those, the, the yarn on the slant is the yarn over. So bring the yarn forward, to just loosen the stitches a bit, put the needle through two and knit them together. So if I show you, you can see the yarn over, there's a yarn over there and there's a yarn over there. So every other stitch if you like is a yarn over and I'm just going to do that all the way around. I just want to show you what happens when you get to the end um, of a needle. Just give you a refresher. It's exactly the same that we've just done but just want to make sure that you know how to put your yarn in the correct position. So I've done yarn over, knit two together all the way across that needle and I'm going to do the same on this needle. Now, obviously, on my sample here, I've got a lot fewer stitches than you will have, but it doesn't matter. The principle is exactly the same and it works in exactly the same way. So just as we did before, just hold that um, 
yarn down to the in, in front of your work like so put your needle through two stitches to knit two together then you have to bring your yarn up and round to even knit them so you've created a yarn over yarn forward knit two together yarn forward that creates the yarn over knit two together knit two together it's very quick when you have very few stitches on yours will be going quick as well yarn forward and knit two together okay you've now done the tricky bit on on this <laughs> so that's good news isn't it um so we haven't decreased our stitch count if you want to go along and count now um you will have exactly the same kind of number on your needles it's just you've replaced some stitches with yarn overs so when we go round and knit them they magically turn into eyelets so you just knit the yarn over um, as if it's a stitch so that's a yarn over. I'm just going to knit it as if it's a stitch all the way round. And let me show you. I'll get to the end of this needle and show you. What it looks like. Okay. Put the yarn over there. Okay, so you can see clean through those lovely holes that have been made by making the yarn over. All right, so I'm going to finish this round um, and then after that you've got several rounds of just straight knitting. So I'm going to do that as well and I'm going to see you at the end of that part to show you how to finish off the Pico Edge. Right, here we are at the end of, well on your pattern you'll be at the end of round 109 um, and I've cut the yarn and left a long tail. So let's just have a little look before we continue. You can see um, our eyelet row there very clearly. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this top bit inside the hot water bottle and that will leave a frill. It's so clever. So we're going to leave our stitches on the needles, but we're going to turn the hot water bottle cover inside out. Okay, so it's now turned through and it's now you can see we're now working on the wrong side um, of the hot water bottle cover. Um, sew in any ends that are around this sort of area of the neck. Don't sew this long one in, we're gonna work with that in a minute. Um, I think you're asked to count 17 rows down for the next part. Don't be, I'm not gonna be concerned with the number that I'm counting, because obviously my piece is a lot smaller than yours. I just want you to be able to count accurately so to know what to look for. So that's what we're, we'll just be looking at at this moment. Um, to start with, you need to count from the first row of um, blue, in your case, pearl bumps. Um, so your, uh, in my case, it's pink. So you can see very clearly, it's kind of like this pink sandwiched between two rows of green. Well, you're going to have blue sandwiched between two rows of um, uh, turmeric. So it's quite uh, obvious which is the first row that we are talking about. So I'm going to get this really close to the camera and hope that the focus works okay. So if this here is row one, this is our row one right here. Let me pick that. That is a stitch in the row one. I'm going to count down under that row. Now what I want to do is I only want to count the bumps that are going in the same direction directly underneath the first one that I've picked. You can pick any of them on that row, it doesn't matter, as long as you say stay within that line counting down. So I don't want you going one, then two, then three, then four, four, zigzagging. Don't zigzag, go directly down the rows that way. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna choose this stitch here as my first stitch. And I'm going to count, well, I'm going to start counting down and decide how many. Let me have a little look. So if I count down, maybe, um, how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, eight, six, six, seven, eight. If I count down maybe um, eight rows, that should be about right for me. Don't get hung up on the numbers. I'll just say it again. Just look at the technique. So I'm going to start with this stitch. 
I'm going underneath to the identical one underneath. That's number two. Number three, identical underneath. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I've worked only down that row. I haven't gone to the left or the right. There's been no zigzagging. I have worked directly under that first stitch I picked. As I said, it doesn't matter what stitch you pick as long as you stay on a line. So that where I am now is the row that I want to start sewing my end, uh, my top down onto. Um, but I want to start somewhere where I'm, um, it's kind of going to be, you know, I, I'd like to start at an edge so it's sort of a little bit hidden. So I'm going to work around um, so that I'm under, directly under this stitch, can you see? So in order to not lose my place, I'm just gonna pop a little stitch marker in where that needle is. Now I know your stitch markers are a lot prettier than this, but um, I want you to be able to really see it. <laughs> so I'm working along this, can I get that closer? This row, can you see, like a dashed line? I'm not going up, down, up, down. I'm just working along that row, one, two, Three, and I'm just working my way around to the edge. I'm just going to turn and I want to be, and I might be there or it might be the next one along. I just kind of want to be directly under. Um, let me work up. I want to be directly under this edge and I think there is it. So that is where I'm going to start sewing my um, end out. So I'm going to put the stitch marker in that particular stitch. Okay, so I have marked where I'm going to fold my edge down to meet. So let us do that. Um, let me This is going to be fiddly because I've got a sort of a small piece that I'm working with. Yours will be less fiddly. So all I'm doing is folding it down. And at where, as I've done that, if you can see, look what's happened to that edge. We've got that nice, um, you know, frilly, curved, whatever you want to call it, pico edge. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just secure that in place um, and it is very clever and there is no casting off required. This is why I particularly love this. So we left that really long end and I'm going to thread up my needle and I'm perfectly happy with what's going on because I've marked that stitch with that tremendously obvious stitch mark, <laughs> um, which is lovely. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to take my needle, take the end of my needle and put it up under that stitch bump. Okay, and then I'm going to put it through the stitch on the end of the needle as if to knit and slip it all the way off the end like so. I can take that stitch marker away now. We know where we're at and just pull Pull that yarn through. Now I don't want to pull really, really hard. I want to keep that just as it is, just nice and neat and going downwards. If I pull up like this, I can see the bump where my yarn is going through. And now I want to come immediately to the left of the bump and find the next bump along. Okay, so let me do that again. You can see that my yarn is coming out of this bump. I'm coming along one stitch, one bump, not working up or down on that wiggle, just literally to the left of it and coming up and under the next bump. I'm going through the stitch as if to knit and slipping it straight off the edge. Pull the yarn through. Don't pull too tight. Okay, and I'm going to be working like that all the way around. So coming along to the next bump along. Now be careful not to miss any out because the, the bumps that you're working through along this line will directly 
correlate the number of stitches that you are taking off that needle. Okay, continue to pull it down. Do not pull too tight. Working along under the next bump. All the way around, take the stitch off the end, pull it through, not too tight. And what we're doing as we work around is we are taking the stitches off the needle, obviously, and securing them so they can't unravel because they're being stitched down. So no need to um, fasten off or cast off or whatever you want to call it. It's being taken care of with this nice little sewing exercise that we've got going on. And that is it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go and work that all the way around and I'll see you just at the end. So little reminder, come up and under the pearl bump, put your needle through as if to knit, take it off the end, pull your yarn through gently, not too tight and down it goes. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around my stitches across both needles and I'll see you when I've got a couple left to do. Okay, I'm on the last three stitches. And that's obviously why we've worked, started at the edge. We had to start at the edge, didn't we? Because the, the stitches um, were coming off of the edge of the needle. So that's why we started directly underneath it, in case I didn't make that clear. Okay, the last stitch, it lines up, which is wonderful. So the last stitch is off the needle. It's pulled through. Don't worry, that last stitch is going to be a little loose. That's absolutely fine. Needles away. Everything is stitched down, as you can see. I'm going to just sew the end of this yarn in. Again, don't worry too much about that loose stitch at the end there. It's not a problem. It will be hidden. And once you've, once you've uh, blocked your piece it will be nicely even so just a very quick hiding of an end there okay and you can see the pico edge is finished I'm going to turn it back through and you'll see the full effect on the tiny hot water bottle cover which is very cute indeed and there it is so I've turned it back the right way through and you can see that pico edge um, works beautifully and as I said if you look into it you can see the that it's double edged uh, or double sided so both sides look like the right side it's a lovely neat way to finish off your projects and hopefully you'll agree not too tricky to achieve